All right, so just discussed piggy banks and why you need them to stay alive. Um, and now the final thing I want to touch on is losing because this is a very normal part of the process. Um, I always hear about people who complain um, like, I lost money on this call. I lost money on this token, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, it's kind of your fault because you didn't put the proper risk management in place. And also you don't understand that you're going to lose money. That's part of making money is you have to lose money, right? So um, these are some of the mistakes I made in the very first bull run I experienced, uh, like in 2019. Um, so yeah, number one was I lost over six figures in a stable coin uh, because of the Luna crash. So the stable coin was UST, US Terra. Um, I explained this in my last uh, lesson, but basically the stable coin stopped being a dollar and it fell to like 80 cents, then 20 cents, then like five cents. Uh, so yeah, I lost a lot of money on that and I learned a lesson. Um, and the only reason I'm still here is because I used a piggy bank and I'm alive. Um, second thing was I, I, I wasted like so much money on stupid NFTs. Like NFTs were really popular, but they're also really stupid because they're not liquid. Like you can have a JPEG and it's really hard to sell JPEG, coincidentally. Uh, not a lot of people want to buy a, a, a picture of a, of a monkey or a bear uh, when the price is down a Bitcoin. So... Yeah, NFTs are very non-liquid. Um, they're only hot when they're trending, when it's a narrative. And I, yeah, I lost a lot of money just buying stupid NFTs that uh, I shouldn't have. Um, thirdly is I got my wallet drained. I actually, I got my wallet drained uh, because of a phishing email. Um, I explained this in the first lesson on scams, but basically I clicked on a, a scam link and then it asked me to approve a contract and then I did it. And then next thing I know, like, Literally within a second, because it's all code, right? It'll automatically drain the account. Uh, I lost all my money. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, next, I, I lost money because I, I lost a pair of private keys. Um, yeah, kind of stupid. Uh, I got rug pulled at least 12 times. Like, you know, tokens, token launches, it goes up and then you don't sell and then goes to zero. You know, that happens. Um, and then also I lost a lot of money just from round tripping. So I did not keep track of all these different coins I was in and all these different ecosystems. Um, so you really need to be organized and probably you really need to be concentrated on just a few bets um, because anytime you try to do too many things, you will lose track of it unless you're very organized. Um, and you constantly got to be monitoring it. You got to be on the ball about this stuff because, uh, yeah, I mean, something could go up really for one day and then your other investments could be down. But, you know, you try to get them all in sync and it doesn't work that way. You have to sell it when it's up and the other ones kind of do their own timeline. <clears throat> so this is some, adv some advice that I, I would apply for next time. Uh, number one is to be way more organized. So make duplicates of your private keys. Always, always better to have a lot of copies um, than just one copy. Give them to someone you trust, right? So like if you make two copies... Keep one for yourself and then the second one you could rip it in half and give one to your brother or one to like your stepmom or something um and that way you can kind of just have some insurance in case anything were to happen um secondly very underrated is to get enough sleep uh anytime i made a trade past midnight or like really late like 2 a.m right just reading tweets and then seeing a token and like oh, oh it's gonna go off like you impulsively make that purchase and then you're super tired so you go to sleep, you fall asleep, and then, you know, it goes down like 100% the next morning. Um, yeah, when you're doing meme coins, you always, always have to be monitoring monitoring it, basically. So as a rule of thumb, anytime you buy a meme coin, you should be prepared to spend the next 30 minutes just staring at the chart, right? If you're not going to stare at the chart for the next 30 minutes, don't even bother buying it. Um, thirdly, is I would, think, I would think of the risk and return. Um, so... You know, if I bought this NFT, do I think I would make more money than if I just held the, the, the ETH version of it, right? So, you know, if you buy an NFT, it costs 0 0.2 Ethereum, right? Am I going to make more money, more money in Ethereum from buying this NFT? Or do I think it's going to go down? In that case, I should just hold the Ethereum and not do anything. Um, so, yeah, basic. Um, you know, don't put too many eggs in one basket. Uh, a lot of protocols are new. A lot of protocols are that offer really high APY rates are, are brand new and they're not proven. So you can't put too much money into one protocol. Um, no matter if there's an airdrop coming up, like just don't put too much money in one thing. That's what happened with me. And that's how I lost all my money on the, 
on this one here on Luna. <clears throat> um, fifthly, I would say tracking. So make like a detailed spreadsheet if you're good with spreadsheets uh, to monitor all your coins across every chain. Uh, you know, have some type of bot that, that catches the alerts and the price movements um, at all times if you're spread out that much. Uh, but ideally, you just want to be concentrated on like one sector of crypto. So like if it's NFTs, if it's DeFi, if it's meme coins, just concentrate on one thing and you'll be better off. Um, and that leads me to the last point, which is concentration, right? So I would have I would have placed more time on self-reflection and journaling instead of trying to chase everything and reading all these tweets and threads about new airdrops or new you know blockchains that are coming out. Um, I didn't have the mind capacity uh, the bandwidth to be spread out all over the place, right? Cause you have a job, you have a life, you know, you're, you're doing whatever. Um, and crypto requires a lot of monitoring if you're going to be doing it, especially if it's across different blockchains. So be concentrated. The best thing I did was journal. Um, because of this, I was able to track my, psycho my psychology and I got better. Um, so I would journal why I'm buying a coin, what I think is going to happen with this coin. And then I could compare it to something like from a month ago. And just doing that, you get better. You get to learn from yourself. You get to read your own psychology. Um, and yeah, you, <laughs> you get to ignore the advice on Twitter and everyone's tweets, everyone who's bull posting. Um, so yeah, journaling and tracking your psychology is the best thing you can do. Um, secondly, would be trailing narratives. So hopping on these waves that are trending. So. When I got into crypto, the hottest thing was Luna because of the, the stablecoin thing. NFTs were really hot. Um, watching for NFT drops, like all these tools that were tracking NFT drops, that was really popular. So go wherever the attention is and then try to predict where the attention will go next and be there first. Um, thirdly, I would say piggy banks. So just using a piggy bank kept me alive. Uh, because anytime I burned through all my, my funds on like stupid trades as a beginner, I always had like another wallet that I could use and, and I was investing smarter with it. <clears throat> and then ideally, you know, once you hit something big, it covers all the losses. Um, so that's just part of the game is losses. Uh, fourthly is hardware wallets. So yeah, I didn't get drained um, or scammed for the most part because I used a hardware wallet. So that was a good investment. Um, and then, yeah, like I didn't fall for scams. Like I was, I was very vigilant. I never sent private keys out to anyone. I never, you know, gave money to someone who could invest for me. So yeah, just avoiding scams was, was a really obvious one. So yeah, that's basically the lesson. Um, the core thing I want to get across to you guys is that you just have to survive in crypto, right? So you should have a hot wallet. That's your like shit coin trading. You should have a cold wallet where your savings go to. This is like the piggy bank. And then if you have a lot of money and you're super paranoid, you can make a paper wallet. Um, and then, yeah, I'm long crypto because, you know, nobody trusts the government and the trust in the government keeps shrinking. So the only option left is crypto. Um, so, yeah, if you enjoyed this lesson, um, you can check, check all the links in the description where I have uh, the chat and stuff like that. And uh, feel free to share the school academy with anyone that you know who wants to get into crypto.